Good afternoon, everyone, and happy Friday. I think we uh, are about to get started here. Lucy is logging everyone in. Uh, welcome to yet another virtual Town Center CID and Town Center Community Alliance Lunch and Learn. Hopefully you have your lunch with you and you're ready to learn. Um, we are excited to have some of our partners from Cobb County with us today to um, answer your questions and provide information about the upcoming SPLOST. As you know, CIDs are uh, in the education business. We are not able to advocate for voting items. However, we can provide education and outreach. And so today we are really excited to have Ross Cabot moderating um, a team from Cobb County. Uh, we have Randy Kreider, who's a director of public service. We have Jimmy Giese, who's a director of parks. And then joining us briefly will be Erica Parrish, um, who's the director of DOT. So we, um, <clears throat> there are a couple of other areas related to SPLOST that are included in the November um, list that are outside of these three areas. However, we wanted to focus on the three areas that most impact projects related to the Town Center CID and the Alliance. So we work very closely with Randy, Jimmy, and, and Erica, of course, um, on our projects. So SPLOST has been um, something that has been very effective for, for Town Center, and we have funded a lot of projects through that historically, including Skip Span Connector, um, Noonday Creek Trail, and the South Barrett Reliever, just to name a few. So um, this SPLOST is focused a lot on maintenance and um, safety and technology. And so I am going to not waste any more time, um, but I will hand it over to Ross. And then I'll also remind you, if you're not a member of the Town Center Community Alliance, to uh, check it out. We have memberships available on our website. This is typically a benefit for our Alliance members. However, during the COVID pandemic, we continue to do it virtually and open it up to the entire community. So enjoy this membership benefit. Um, and please, if you are interested, you can reach out to Jennifer Hogan for more information or visit our website. So Ross, thank you for being here today as well as the rest of our team. Uh, and we'll let you take it away. Thank you, Tracy. And, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. And glad to be coming to you live from our bad cave here at the uh, Cobb County uh, uh, headquarters uh, near the Marietta Square. You know, this has been a uh, challenging year for a lot of us for a lot of reasons. It's been very challenging for us when it comes to SPLOS because normally we would be out doing all sorts of events and outreach to uh, educate people about uh, the SPLOS renewal, uh, what it's all about and what's in it for them. And uh, we only got three or four town halls into our maybe overly ambitious schedule of 20 town halls before COVID hit and we had to kind of put everything on hold, but we've posted everything that we've got pretty much on our website at cobsploss2022.org. We invite you to go there. There's videos, there's information, the project list is on there and you can even drill down into some of our GIS maps that show uh, what's in it for me. You can get down really into your neighborhood and see if there's any uh, projects that are um, in your neighborhood. Um, so we'll get started with our presentation as we wait for Erica and everybody else to uh, log on. Uh, remember the vote is November 3rd. It's coming up really quickly and our challenge is um, we've got um, absentee ballots that go out in the middle of next month and then advanced voting starts three weeks before election day on November 3rd. So uh, people who are hungry for information about SPLOS, we need to get it out to them as uh, quickly as possible. One thing that uh, always astounds me when you look at SPLOS and what it's done in Cobb County, it's been around since the mid 1980s. SPLOS allows a county to go ahead and and build projects. We cannot use this money for operation or maintenance purposes, uh, but we can build projects with it. And we've done a lot in Cobb. And when I put together this video you're about to see on all the projects, really, it's just kind of a snapshot. It's not a comprehensive list by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, it, it would be amazing to me to look at Cobb County without SPLOS, what that would look like. So I wanna play this uh, video that's about a minute and a half long.
So again, when you think about what makes Cobb Cobb and some of the amenities we have in Cobb County, um, you know, a lot of that is uh, SPLOST related. Um, and it's just hard to imagine what this county would be like without SPLOST, which has been in our um, history since the mid eighties. And we are asking voters to extend that for another six years when the current SPLOST expires in, at the end of 2021. Here's the big picture of what we're looking at when, when it comes to the uh, next upcoming SPLOST. And you can imagine that um, roads and infrastructure, uh, DOT will have a big say in that. And while I'm talking to y'all, I wanna ask Lucy to reach out to Erica because she's DOT and she's having trouble logging in. So if you can uh, contact her and help her get in because she's, uh, she's got a lot of slides. Thank you, Lucy. Um, so there again is the um, big picture of what the SPLOS renewal will be like. And here's the stats uh, over six years Again, uh, starting in 2022, expected to raise 750 million for the county. That's actually down. When we started putting this program together, it was uh, we expected 810 million would be our target number, but uh, finance, looking at the uncertain economic future, uh, knocked that down from 135 million dollars to 125 million dollars, just to be on the safe side. And that's how we ended up with 750 million. So we had to cut some of some things in there, like community impact projects went from 40 five to $32 million was still extremely important. You can see in the middle uh, bottom there, the cities get $183 million out of this. Uh, that's very important uh, for them. Uh, in fact, um, a lot of people ask, why are you asking for six years? The chairman actually at one point was out saying he thought that was too long, but uh, the mayors made a point and a plea for a six year period because they don't get as much money per year as we do in the county. And, and some of the infrastructure project that they were planning for needed that six years of funding to be able to uh, accomplish. So uh, if you go to cobsplos2022.org, you can see a letter that the mayors wrote, the chairman and the board asking for uh, uh, the SPLOS to, to be renewed for another six years for that very reason. So we invite you to check that out. Um, uh, so that's pretty much the uh, summary of the uh, upcoming SPLOS renewal. Again, this is not a new tax. This is just a continuation of uh, SPLOST that's been in effect since the mid 80s here in Cobb County. And even with SPLOST and the schools have a SPLOST, Cobb County has been able to maintain the lowest sales tax rate of any county in the county. We're tied with several other counties for that honor. And it's also helped us keep the millage rate, your property taxes down to the lowest rate in the metro area. So with that, we'll turn it over to uh, Public Safety Director um, Randy Kreider to talk about countywide and public safety projects. Randy. Unmute, Randy. There we go. You'd think I was a professional at this by now, but uh, thank you everyone. I appreciate uh, the invite. And uh, as you can see on your slide now, uh, I'm gonna talk about the countywide projects and since most of these are connected in some way, form or fashion to public safety, uh, I will cover this slide. First there you will see on your uh, left, uh, we're including in the SPLOS renewal, a new animal services shelter uh, facility. Uh, this current facility is out on Al Bishop uh, and it's been there uh, for many, many years now. We're really uh, fighting the rodents out there inside that structure. And I'm not talking about the furry friend friends, but I'm talking about rodents. Um, and if you've been in the animal services facility, the shelter lately, uh, you will see that uh, it is in dire need of uh, more than just some renovation. We need to do a rebuild out there. And uh, we have 15 million uh, in this uh, splash renewal to do just that. Uh, the next thing you'll see on your screen is uh, jail security upgrades, and this is mainly for the access control system. Uh, that is a very large system inside that jail that controls all the uh, entrances, all the exits, uh, all of the individual cell doors. Uh, and so they're looking to upgrade that entire security system out at the adult detention facility there on county services. Uh, the next thing you'll see on your list is uh, 18 million in the uh, renewal for the judicial technology upgrades. Uh, this includes uh, courtroom and the county clerk audio recording um, system that uh, they're going to replace. Uh, it also has a lot in there for the DA's office, the solicitor as far as uh, digital 
evidence management system where they can manage evidence uh, with a uh, up-to-date state-of-the-art uh, system. The next is uh, smart conference rooms and teleconference capabilities that they're going to uh, put in place in the courts. Uh, and then actually in the courtrooms and the jury assembly rooms, they're gonna increase or update that technology and audio visual equipment as well. So there's 18 million in there for our courts, our DA, uh, our solicitor's office, uh, and so on. And then the last one you'll see on the countywide project list is the countywide uh, radio system. That's the 911 uh, radio system. And as many of you may not know, uh, our 911 center in Cobb County dispatches for uh, some of our police departments in the cities. Uh, we also dispatch for uh, specifically for the city of Marietta fire. Uh, and so uh, there is some countywide uh, connections uh, there that um, funding will be utilized to upgrade that uh, system countywide. And you'll have also, when I get to the public, Cobb County public safety piece of this, you will see where we also have some additional funds for, for the 911 center. So that's a high level uh, look at the uh, countywide projects for the splash renewal. I think Ross Jimmy is, has, okay, you're gonna go on into public safety. All right, very good. So looking at public safety specifically, uh, we have, uh, you saw in the 2016 splash where we were able to purchase an existing facility on the East West Connector to uh, build out a police training center. Uh, that funding is being used to, it was used to purchase that and do a lot of renovation out there. And uh, we're asking for 17 million in order to uh, build a state of the art uh, firing range uh, at the new police training center. And I won't get into the details of that, but we have a lot of other agencies throughout uh, the metro area that come and, and we share that range with them. Uh, and of course they provide uh, amenities on other opportunities that we are able to go to their department. So it's kind of a shared thing. Uh, but we're looking to uh, put eight, uh, 17 million into a, a state-of-the-art uh, firing range out at the new police training center. There also was in the 2016 SPLOS the purchase of a new police headquarters. We also here again bought an existing structure uh, and we're needing um, about a million dollars to do some build out in that new structure that's already been purchased. Uh, we are looking to start moving into that facility on a, on a certain number of the floors this coming November, uh, but there's a need to do some build out uh, in that current building for police headquarters. You also saw in the 2016 SPLOS uh, patrol vehicle replacement. We wanna continue that with $10 million for the upcoming SPLOS renewal. Uh, and that keeps us on a rotating uh, cycle for the patrol, police patrol vehicles. Um, and so there's 10 million in there for that. We're looking to actually build a new 911 center uh, at the current location of where the existing 911 center is. Uh, for those of you who don't know, our police, fire, and 911 center are, are all accredited agencies uh, through their own accrediting um, agencies. And with that, there's some challenges for the current 911 center when it comes to setbacks. We're very close to uh, Cherokee Street. Uh, if you've been down uh, Cherokee Street, know where the 911 center is, it does not meet the setback required for our accrediting agency. Uh, and there's a lot of challenges. Um, updates need to be done on that facility. And so we look to build actually a new 911 center. And here's the, the next one is the radio system upgrade. Uh, there's 16 million in there. And that uh, has more to do with replacement of radios, uh, countywide, police, fire, uh, those people that are on our radio system. And, uh, and so we, uh, we look to replace a lot of the radio, radio consoles, uh, at the 911 center and so on. And then uh, we also have in the next SPLOS, in the SPLOS renewal, a new uh, renovation of our existing fire training facility there on out, uh, off of County Services on Valor Drive. Uh, we're looking, police will be moving out and moving into their new training center. Right now we share a training facility for public safety. That facility was built back in 1994 when we had about one third of the number of personnel to train 
in Cobb County. Uh, and obviously uh, the footprint there does not provide us enough room to expand to meet all of the public safety training needs and there, therefore we purchased the police training facility out on East West Connector. And now we need money to do a renovation on the current training center and that will be the sole training facility for Cobb County Fire. And then the last on the list is a new fire station 12. Uh, the current fire station 12 is located off of Canton Road on Brackett Road and we have already purchased property for a new fire station 12. It's right across from the Kroger on Canton Highway uh, there where the uh, Knox exterminating uh, business once existed. Uh, we've already bought that corner. Uh, I think there were three different lots there that we bought and then this uh, money in this splash renewal will be the act, uh, utilized to actually do the construction uh, on a new fire station 12. So that's about uh, what we have in the, uh, the splash renewal for public safety. Thank you, Ross. All right, um, thanks Randy. And now uh, Parks Director Jimmy Giesti is here to talk about community impact projects. Take it away. Thank you, Ross, and thank you for the opportunity to be part of this prestigious group of folks. Uh, community impact projects, uh, that's a new concept in our, in our SPLOS programs here in Cobb County. Uh, in, in previous SPLOS, everything was divided up, uh, up amongst the county departments, and they went about their work. However, this time, everyone realized that the commissioners are the four district commissioners are very in tune with their constituency. Uh, so uh, each district commissioner was allotted X number of dollars to, to, to create or, or, or to identify uh, projects within their district, which they feel like would make a positive impact upon the community. Uh, as Ross mentioned, uh, initially that amount was 45 million. Uh, and whenever the uh, overall proceeds were brought down to a more conservative estimate, uh, it dropped down to 32 million, which meant each district commissioner was allotted $8 million for projects within their district. Uh, the, the map you see uh, identifies where each one of those uh, community impact projects are, and I will briefly run down the list and give you an idea of what those projects are. In District 1, uh, which is the northwest portion of the county, uh, Commissioner Gambrell has identified phase one development of Kemp Family Park on Burnt Hickory Road and phase one of the, uh, uh, the north side of Leon Hall Price Park. We purchased both of those properties with a 2008 Parks Bond Program. So each one of those uh, has $1 million each for our phase one development on those. Next in District 1 uh, is the Al Bishop, complex, Al Bishop Softball Complex and the Lost Mountain Complex. Those are our two major hubs for, for either girls softball or adult softball competitions. Changing out the old metal halide fixtures uh, to LED uh, fixtures, it, it doubles the, the light and it halves the uh, electricity used. And also we're looking to go to uh, synthetic turf infields. That's one of the most maintenance uh, demanding aspects of those uh, facilities. So trying to incorporate more and more synthetic turf. Uh, up at Big Shanty Park, uh, for those of you who have been there, you realize there's really not parking for the tennis courts. Uh, you have to park over at Kennesaw Mountain High School. Uh, we're, we'll be ex extending that parking lot from the Arts Center further down toward the tennis courts, and it can double up there. Uh, at Ward Recreation Center at Lost Mountain Park, we will be doing some, some major uh, interior and exterior renovations on it. Up at the Cobblestone Golf Course, which if you've not played at Cobblestone, it's a beautiful course. It is owned by Cobb County. Uh, but the cart paths are getting old. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. A lot of trees growing, bucking up cart paths, and uh, we'll be replacing a lot of those cart paths there. Uh, in our library system, uh, Commissioner Gamble realized that there was a little bit uh, left with the North Cobb Regional Library. Uh, so she's allotted funds to finish up some things that had to be put off at the North Cobb Regional. Uh, and then a couple of the senior centers, the North Cobb Senior Center and the Senior Wellness Center and the West Cobb Senior Center, doing some lobby renovations, some porticos, covered walkways and things like that. So she really spread our money around there in District 1 uh, and she feels like those will be uh, very impactful upon the community. 
Let's move over to District 2. Uh, Commissioner Ott realized that the Tritt property would be the number one uh, goal for his district. East Cobb Park uh, was done back around 2000. We were able to acquire about half of Ms. Tritt's property during, uh, with, with a 2008 parks bond program. Uh, but we also have a first right of refusal on the remainder. Uh, so Mr. Uh, Commissioner Ott uh, put his entire $8 million uh, toward uh, the possible acquisition of that, of the remainder of the Tritt property. Let's go up to District 3, which is the northeast portion of the county. Uh, Commissioner Burrell, uh, her, she only had three uh, community impact projects. The first would be to repurpose Shaw Park. Shaw Park back in the day was one was a was a baseball hub in that area of the county. Uh, that sent, baseball's kind of died down, uh, so we're looking to possibly remaster plan it and totally re redo the park. Uh, Ebenezer Downs uh, at the corner of Ebenezer and Canton Road. Uh, that was one of her properties purchased in the 2008 Parks Bond. Uh, she's allocating three million dollars for us to to build that park way and get it all done. And then last but not least, in her district. Uh, the county is uh, partnering with a uh, nonprofit, the Cobb Veterans Memorial Foundation, to place a memorial uh, at, at the Civic Center complex for uh, fallen veterans. And uh, she is allocating $1 million toward that project uh, there in District 3. Uh, and last but not least, in uh, District 4 in the southern part of the county, uh, Commissioner Cupid kind of followed the Commissioner Gambrel model and spread her money around a little bit. Uh, as far as uh, projects, she's wanting to expand the public health facility at our South Cobb complex. Uh, also explore the, uh, the possibility of uh, constructing an indoor track facility. Uh, we really do not have a competition track anywhere in our park system, uh, but she realizes that the, the need for that for our children as well as being able to host events. Uh, she also uh, made an, an additional allocation to a 2016 park, uh, Parks Floss project the Osborne Area Recreation Center. Uh, part of that project is acquiring the land along the Windy Hill Corridor. And uh, as you probably know, that is not a cheap uh, endeavor. Uh, she had a couple of sidewalk projects, uh, which she liked uh, along Ewing Road and Schaefer Road. Uh, and then she went to the other properties uh, that were purchased and just doing some $100,000 for each one for us to create some entryways. So maybe some gravel parking lots, maybe a sign, uh, just to get those new properties open to the public. Uh, and then last but not least, uh, we have a lot of events on our Mabel House grounds where the amphitheater is. Uh, and when there's an event on the grounds, there's really no restrooms. Uh, so, so she allocated $100,000 for us to uh, purchase um, or, or, or to construct a restroom. Uh, we in parks are, are, are very pleased with the way this process worked, as you can imagine. Uh, out of the 32 million, 88% of that money uh, is, is going to a park project. So we're, we realize that the residents of Cobb County love their park system, and I believe the commissioners do as well. So that's a list of the projects. Next, uh, parks, libraries, and facilities. This is the, these are the lists that were generated by staff uh, from parks, libraries, and facilities. Uh, as you can see on the on the screen, uh, syn synthetic turf conversions. We, we dipped our toe in this water in the 2016 uh, SPLOSH program uh, with the three fields at Mud Creek, the four fields up at OC Hubert, and one field over at Terrell Mill. They have been resoundingly uh, uh, popular and successful. Uh, whenever we start issuing our rain out notices, you never see those fields on there. So it's, it's great to have that. However, uh, every 10 years or so, you've got to go in and not reconstruct them, but just replace the carpet. Uh, so in the 2022 program, we realized that those uh, eight fields will need to be uh, recarpeted, as well as we're wanting to add two more fields at Lost Mountain and then two down at Wallace Park. Um, we have a lot of technology and life safety issues as well. Uh, a lot of uh, cameras uh, and, and systems where we control people who come in and out of our parks, uh, and, and those are spread all over the county, uh, from the, the, the Night Owl security systems uh, at Big Shanty, at the Corps of Engineer property, or the uh, Alatoona Creek Park, Fair Oaks, Hyde Farm. Uh, we, we realize that 
unfortunately, the bad guys realize there's a lot of folks at parks. Uh, we've had some instances of smash and grab and some things like that that uh, we're, we're trying to get on top of. So our, our, our safety is, is very important to us. Uh, building renovations and improvements. Um, and let me pause there for a second and, and, and give you a, a real brief synopsis on our, on our park system. Prior to the 2011 SPLOS, a majority of our system was built with uh, voter approved general obligation bonds. In 2011, parks was included in the SPLOS for the first time. And uh, we had about $80 million, but it was all for renovation. Nothing new, all for renovation of our infrastructure. That went so well that they said, okay, let's include them in the 16 program as well. And we were able to, to, to do some newer projects as well as continuing to address our infrastructure. Uh, you saw the Sewell Mill Library and Cultural Center uh, in, in the video, the Miller Event Center over at Miller Park. You saw Ackworth's uh, new community center, which the county gave them about uh, 60 or 70 percent of that money for that, uh, as well as some other new projects. So now we're getting back to infrastructure repair, infrastructure improvements. So you, you're not going to see that, that, that real uh, eye-catching, star-studded, uh, project like you did in the 16 program, but what you are going to see is what's under the ground, what's in the air, our infrastructure. Uh, you've got to keep that strong or your buildings, your, your sewer lines, everything's going to fall down around you. So now I, I should have said that to begin with, but I, but I didn't. I'm sorry. Uh, building renovations and improvements, uh, everything from new roofs at the art station uh, to gym, gymnasium floors in our, in our recreation centers, um, restroom facilities needing to be upgraded, uh, new fixtures, um, new MAR site for our, for our pools. One of the things that, that is very, uh, or will be addressed very much in this floss will be our aquatic centers. Uh, each one of those that is a very harsh environment for any type of equipment, any type of metal. Uh, and so we're, we're looking to replace the dehumidification systems in, our, in, in all of our aquatic centers, except for Central. Uh, we, we were able to just do that out of our budget, uh, but also painting metal surfaces with an epoxy paint, uh, remarsiting. Uh, we've got to stay on top of those assets or they will be of no use to us. So that's building renovations and improvements. Uh, we talked about the synthetic turf. Uh, electrical lighting upgrades. Uh, we're trying to slowly but surely get rid of all the metal halide fixtures. Uh, not only, like I said, is it double the light for half the cost, uh, but also with uh, technology like it is now, those metal halide bulbs are getting harder and harder and harder to find uh, because the industry is pushing everyone uh, toward LED. I don't know if you've noticed that when you go to Home Depot these days. Uh, it's pretty hard to find incandescent bulbs or, or the regular bulbs anymore. Uh, they're wanting to push you toward LED. Mechanical system replacements. Once again, that's the dehumidification systems. Uh, we're needing to go to a chalk filtering uh, system at our, at our gymnastic center. Uh, paving in various parks. We, we always need to fix our paving. Uh, park amenities, replacing bleachers, replacing benches, replacing trash cans. That's the type of stuff that we need to do to keep our park system in, in good condition. Uh, the side erosion pond, ponds we need to have uh, dredged out. Subsurface infrastructure, we've included 1.5 million just to go in and start looking at our subsurface water lines, sewer lines, uh, and, and we, we will address them on an as needed basis. And then uh, park signage, uh, we will address that as well. Uh, as far as libraries go, uh, they're looking to do a lot of enhancements at their, at, their, at, at many of their branches. Uh, video surveillance cameras is also going to be Im important for the library system. Uh, Lewis A. Ray, Stratton, Kemp, Bindings, uh, they're looking to kind of change their space up, modernize it. Uh, team uh, areas, uh, more computers, uh, make it, just kind of bring it up to date. Uh, also, at the, the, the Mountain View, South Cobb, and West Cobb Regional Libraries, libraries they're, they're looking to reconfigure or either expand for some flexible spaces. Uh, so that's uh, what libraries are looking to do. And then last but not least on uh, facilities, 
Uh, this falls under our information services and our property management department. You know, there's, for everything that you can see building wise, uh, asset wise, without the controls placed on our systems by IS, we would lose everything. Uh, they have to make sure that they have appropriate cybersecurity. They have to make sure that uh, anytime you log in to pay something online, it's getting to where it needs to get. Uh, so they're, they're, they're looking to uh, keep their technology infrastructure uh, up to date. And then property management, they manage all of our buildings outside of parks, and they're always having to replace chillers, doors, and, and uh, uh, rearrange buildings. So that kind of takes care of parks, libraries, and facilities, and I look forward to some questions hopefully at the end. Thanks, Ross. Thanks, Jimmy. We may take the questions earlier because we've lost our queen of DOT, DOT Director Erica Parrish is uh, not on the line yet. So hopefully she can jump back in. But uh, obviously, as you saw from the first slide that we presented, the um, DOT is uh, one of the big factors in this upcoming SPLOST. And the big reason for that is obviously uh, roadway resurfacing. Uh, my office happens to answer the phones that take in calls from the general public. And we hear a lot about potholes lately and those kind of issues. And they have charts in DOT that shows where our, uh, how our roadway conditions look. And it's obviously been on a downward slope uh, for, for several reasons, including the fact that we just have more people, at least in, before COVID hit, driving on our roads and creating a bigger strain on the resurfacing uh, issues. So when you look at DOT and the upcoming SPLOST renewal, uh, the big part of their pie obviously heads toward roadway resurfacing. Uh, they've already got a long list of projects that they'd like to get started on. So um, that's gonna be their number one priority. Uh, you can see there's a very a long list of other projects they have on here as well. And hopefully by the time we finish this, Erica can jump in and uh, give us an idea of what some of these other things are. A lot, a lot of that that's been a big, uh, there's a couple of these parts of the pie that's been a big concern to us over the years. And that's got to do with the roadways around schools and school zone improvements. That was a priority when we started uh, formulating this list as well. And uh, just the technology. Uh, I can't explain, I've done a couple of stories with DOT. I can't explain how important that traffic signal timing is and some of the methods they've been using to, to move Cobb link buses through high traffic zones. Um, and um, so um, that, that's that been a big priority as well. And I can see Erica is starting to- Come reconnect. back. Yeah, you you're back. Yeah, I'm take so over, sorry. take over for the slide. I'm sorry, I'm having crazy trouble this morning. So I don't know what Ross covered, but I'll just, I'll just restart. So um, for transportation, um, this, this, um, this plus, this that we're hoping um, that the public will renew, um, you'll see on here that our, our major um, area that we're really hoping to bring back into a state of really good repair is going to be our um, roadway and infrastructure um, preservation program. So as you look at this this pie chart out of the 300 and almost 30 million dollars, um, 70 percent is going to infrastructure preservations which is going to include um, resurfacing. Th the biggest bulk of that is resurfacing at 213 million dollars. And that really gets us to about thirty-five and a half million dollars a year, and one of the reasons that is so important is um, over the years, you know, as cost of asphalt has gone up um, from the 05 to the 11 to the 16 plus, we have gradually started decreasing the amount of funds that we have been able to utilize for resurfacing, and. Um, now we're about seventeen million dollars a year that we're spending on resurfacing, and we're almost. Um, at a level of a, between a good and a fair condition for our overall street network. If anyone's interested later on, um, if, if you can reach out to Lucy or me even, um, we have an, a, um, a, an, a, a super great um, story map that our team has put together that kind of walks you through um, resurfacing how we rate roads, um, what our road network looks like, um, if it's a, a fair road, a, a good road, poor road, or in great condition. 
And we're right, right now we're around that 40, around a 40 PS, PCI. Um, and we really wanna get up into that good condition. So we, we really need to be spending close to $40 million a year is what is expected to get us back up into that good condition and to keep us there. Um, some of you may or may not know that um, a road life cycle is between 15 and 20 years. So once we pave it, you know, and get it up into that good condition, we'll, you know, that cycle will be between 15 and 20 years before we have to, to go there again. Um, another big component of our infrastructure preservation is gonna be bridges and culverts. You know, it's, we've got to make sure that our bridges and culverts are in good condition because we don't want um, those um, structures to, to come out and be inspected and see that the, the loads are um, not sufficient to carry tractor trailers or freight um, or heavier vehicles like school buses or fire, fire trucks. So, you know, we go out and have those inspected every two years and, you know, we have to make sure that those stay in top notch condi condition. And we're spending right now between around one and a half million dollars a year and, and we uh, really need to increase that to around two, two million um, to, to keep that um, flowing properly. And then one of our, our bigger issues that a lot of you may or may not really know about also is our drainage structures in the county. Um, you know, a lot of the subdivisions that were installed in the 80s have corrugated metal drain pipes in the ground and the life expectancy on those are, you know, 50 years. And so we're, we're coming up to the end of life on a lot of, of these drainage structures in the ground and we're, we're having a lot of um, request for um, issues and we're having to go in and replace a lot of that. So, you know, as, as things age out, we, we need to go in and maintain those. So Ross, do you wanna flip over to the next slide real quick? This, this really shows just some pictures of some of the things that we're talking about. So when you look at resurfacing, that's just some of our equipment that we're out there um, trying to, to resurface our street. And then um, looking at the bridges and culverts, as you look at, um, I don't know that we have the um, actual map, but we, we've identified 11 locations based on the Georgia DOT and Cobb County DOT inspections. And you'll notice the only bridge location identified in the Town Center CID is actually the Bells Ferry at Noonday Creek. So there's a, a bridge project identified there along with filling the gaps from sidewalk gaps out there for the for the trail um, along that corridor. So um, that that is a location that's been identified um, in this um, renewal splice. And then also, you know, this is just this was a, a recent over the last year, I think, location where we had a, a drainage structure wash out in the road collapse. So we've just got to make sure that we're staying on top of these. Um, OK, Ross. And then also, um, when you look at transportation and, you, you know, you look at everything that we really want to make sure that we're covering, you know, a lot of the, the comments and requests that we get from the public include um, operational and safety projects. And because our priority has been identified as infrastructure preservation and not a lot of money was, was allocated to um, actual named projects in this splice. So only the um, 10, 10 plus million dollars, which is around um, 10 operational and safety projects. Um, we have traffic management, technology and planning, which um, as all of us know, we, we're not sure what's gonna happen in the future so we're really excited to make, um, and we want to make sure that we're we're doing a good job, um, trying to stay ahead and and studying and watching the trends for what could happen in the future with the technology, autonomous vehicles, transit, signal priority, and making sure that we're planning and just trying to stay ahead. We also have our school zone improvements, which we always coordinate with the school board to make sure that um, you know we're we're improving these streets. Um, at entrances for our schools to make sure it's safe and accommodates the needs for, for each, each school. One of our um, most important components of our SPLOST, I feel like, is our federal, state, local match component. $25 million is, is allocated um, for this SPLOST, and this is really the area where we work really closely with Town Center CID, Cumberland CID, Georgia DOT, all of our partners. So we work um, especially close with Tracy and Alicia this go round, um, and you'll notice there's not a lot of named projects in this blast, um, but we did put in a good many um, projects that were identified with the help of the Town Center CID that could be leveraged projects 
as we've done in the past to make sure that you know projects in these um, in these areas in the county are able to be funded so an example of that is just our um, like our Barrett Lakes Boulevard corridor improvements we've um, George Busby Park Parkway corridor improvements Bells Ferry Road improvements Big Shanty Road improvements um, you know we, we we try and work really closely with Alicia and Tracy and the team to make sure that projects that is, as they're identified that we can roll either into our SPLOS or into our comprehensive transportation plan to make sure that they're identified and then we can partner together to, the, to utilize funds or request funds. Um, Tracy and the team have been um, instrumental in leveraging, helping the county leverage dollars. So um, you'll, you, some of you may or may not know that, um, you know, Skip Span, South Barrett Reliever, those, those projects were big dollar projects. And without um, our partners, the Town Center CID, helping us um, have lengthy discussions and talking of Georgia DOT, you know, a lot of those would not have come about as quickly. And, and um, you know, that, that was a lot of money that, that we were able to leverage with these SPLOS dollars to help um, move those projects forward. And as we're talking about that component, here's just a couple of little facts. Um, as we've been able to utilize the SPLOS dollars, in the 2005 SPLOS, we leveraged over $70, $70 million, either from the FTA, Georgia DOT, Federal Highway, and other funding sources that could have been GTA, Parks, National Park Service, things like that. Um, in the 2011 SPLOS, we leveraged over $74 million, and then on our 2016 SPLOS, we were Right now, we've already leveraged over $82 million, and that's not including some of the things that we've recently um, potentially been awarded that we haven't got contracts signed on. So that federal, state, local component is, is, is one of the most instrumental components I feel like we have in this blast or our previous blast because it just helps us um, work with partners and leverage those dollars, you know, almost four to one at some times. Yeah, Erica, I was going to jump in and second that. Um, that federal, state, local match for CIDs is so critically important because it's skin in the game early on. CIDs come in at the beginning of projects and do um, concept design and preliminary engineering and then work with the county and the state and Atlanta Regional Commission and other partners to fund our projects. And so those uh, state and federal entities are looking for local skin in the game. And so when we're able to have our projects listed in that match bucket, it allows us to say, okay, this is something that Cobb County supports. This is something that's a part of our comprehensive plan and our master planning at a local level. And we have what it takes to get it done on time and on budget. So we've been able to show that with a lot of our major infrastructure projects like Skip Span and South Barrett Reliever, as you mentioned, um, and, and been able to fast track some things because they've been included on list early on. So that is a, a key bucket, particularly for CIDs. Um, and, and as we look at the SPLOST overall, um, we know that maintenance is really important as well, because as we're looking at studies like our Chastain Road Corridor study that will implement a lot of smart technology, um, hopefully in the projects coming forth, that we will need roads that are well paved and well striped and well signed um, in order to use the technology that's coming down the pike. So, Erica, it's a great partnership as always. Thank you. Yeah. And we, we, and we have y'all are amazing to work with and uh, always help us um, help us in so many ways as we um, work through these processes. So we're definitely grateful for that partnership. It takes a village. It does. <laughs> so a couple other components are sidewalk projects. And these are, these are, um, you know, we, we really have a, you know, if you look at the county and if you looked at the development regulations, we're um, almost a billion dollars worth of sidewalks that could be installed. So, you know, sidewalks, obviously could not be installed everywhere but you know our goal is to have sidewalks and trails um at least in locations where it makes the most sense at schools um to get people to you know um connectivity to, to points so a lot of times as citizens call in and request sidewalks we, we put those on list we sit down with the commissioners but then we prioritize and rank those um there's not a lot of money in this class for that but 
as always, we're, we're always looking to try and um, leverage dollars and, and fill those gaps. And then we have some facility improvements just to, to, to sustain operations and meet expanding needs. So we have a little bit of money in there for our signal shop that needs some enhancements and then some um, enhancements for our transit um, facility. Okay. All right. I'm glad you made it, Erica. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. I appreciate glad. it. Thank you. Uh, and, and I know there's probably some questions, so I just want to ask people to uh, visit cobsplos2022.org. There's a bunch of information on there. And if they have any questions, there's ways you can reach out to us. Tracy? Ross, we've got a couple of questions in the chat window itself. Um, one is related to our collectors and arterials for Erica. Um, they know that, that those roadways take precedent, but does any of the resurfacing money go to subdivisions that are 25 to 30 years old that are showing increased deterioration? So they do. And then, um, so, so what we do um, typically, and uh, you know, as we can all see as we ride our roads, not all roads are meeting this criteria right now. But typically our, our hope is for thoroughfares, major collectors, they're resurfaced every 15 to 20 years. Local roads and subdivisions are 20 to 25. So there are a lot of roads out there that, that have not been resurfaced. Um, but that is our goal is to get them back on a, a more regular um, cycle. Um, and it, part of that is utilizing um, try, the, in, the increase in the resurfacing ask is to get that up there and then make sure that that amount is going to be the amount that we need to continue at over the years. Um, and, and as part of that, you know, um, that story map that I talked about, we're, I'm really proud of that. You can go in, you can look at your road, see when it was last resurfaced. There's a lot of great information on there, but it really dives down into um, how we prioritize and what helps a road get um, considered for resurfacing. Um, so another question is for facilities. It's that the project seemed to include a lot of deferred basic maintenance. Does the county have significant additional maintenance concerns that the SPLOS isn't able to cover? Hmm. I don't know who wants to cover that one. I, I nominate Jimmy Giese. Sounds good. <laughs> Uh, yes, um, there are still quite a few uh, items on that list. Unfortunately, uh, with, the, with the county budget the way it's been the last several years, there has not been a, uh, uh, a large amount of money for, for uh, capital, uh, which is something that you would normally uh, do a lot of these projects with. Uh, so that's why you're seeing them on SPLOST. Uh, and I, to say this is an exhaustive list, it is not. There are there, a lot of things were cut out of the list uh, to get us down to the amount of money where we are now. So there will be more in the future. There's always something to do. It's like when you have a house and you, you buy the house and you think you've got everything right and then there's a leak in the roof and then the concrete needs repaving and all kinds of things. So yep. um, another question is what percent of SPLOST revenue comes from outside the county? Well, I, I, and anybody else can chime in on this. I mean, there's no way of knowing for sure uh, about that. The estimates that I've seen talking to Bill Volkman up in finance is in the 20 to 30% range, but that's really just a guess. It could vary. Uh, obviously we've been getting a lot more outsiders coming into the county for mm -hmm. obvious reasons. Uh, and that number may be going up, but that, that's the number that the number range that gets frequently tossed out. Uh, another question is, why uh, are there so many security upgrades in SPLOST? Uh, I, I guess I'll take that one. Um, we are seeing an uptick in um, uh, bad guys, bad girls coming into the, the, the park system. Uh, and recently we were able to, uh, to put in some uh, LPR or license plate readers where They've already proved successful in identifying uh, uh, stolen cars or uh, uh, known criminals when they come into a park or come into a facility. Uh, so uh, we have always been very reactionary. Whenever something happens, just dial 911 and the police show up and do a report. Maybe you hear from it, maybe you don't in the long run. 
Uh, so we're trying to be more proactive and protect the folks that are in our system or in our buildings um, because we were starting from basically zero to get there. Randy, do you want to speak to that as well? I know that a number of the capital improvements in this loss are related to um, assets in your division. Yes, I think a lot of it is to be honest with you, Tracy, is the day and age in which we live. Uh, people uh, are obviously are very intelligent. They have opportunities to manipulate security systems and uh, the technologies continue to improve. Uh, I will know that, I'll let you know that, uh, you know, the main reason out at the uh, adult detention center, uh, you know, those systems, that system has been in there for so many years that uh, they're starting to have some failures of uh, not, of, of inmates getting out. I'm not saying that. Uh, but uh, I think it's more than anything. It's just the day and age in which we live. Like, like Jimmy said, you know, we, we've never had license plate readers at parks. Uh, and I will say to you that uh, there's been a couple of times where we have actually been able to solve murder cases uh, as a result of these uh, incidents beginning in our parks uh, and identifying those uh, individuals that were involved. Uh, but I think more than anything, it's the day and age in which we live. I mean, uh, there was a day when you came into 100 Cherokee Street for a board of commissioners meeting that you didn't go through any type of security, but, you know, because of the day and age in which we live, I think it is what it is. And also just the age of our county, I'm sure that, you know, there's, there's only so many dollars to go around in terms of making capital improvements. And so those have to be done and phased over a period of time. Um, and that the SPLOS provides that opportunity. Ross, can you speak to that? I can, and we're, it's hitting home for us right now because when we're looking at the upcoming uh, fiscal year, uh, when we look at the economy going uh, maybe down and the amount of money coming to the government um, decreases, guess what the first thing that we always seem to cut from our budget is? It's capital improvement expenses. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we need a lot of that uh, to come back in SPLOS if possible to just to keep up. And it's, it's just like, as you can imagine with anything else, if you own a home, I've got one that was built in 1978. So I'm feeling this one really hard right now. The capital expenses just go up, the older things get, and that's what we're facing. That's true, well said. Uh, another question for Jimmy, and, and that is, I'm trying to keep up. Will the pond at the new Ebenezer Park be retained and improved? Yes, uh, it has already, I might be letting a little secret out, uh, but it's already been restocked one time. Uh, we so we can go a, fish. We can go fish with a commish. Yeah, you can fish with a commish. Uh, we have a a new pond management program where we have signage at all of our ponds that you walk up, you scan a QR code, and it gives you the type of fish that are in the pond, uh, creel limits as far as how many you can keep, how many you can, re or, or that you have to release. And it's, uh, it's a great tool that we partner with GIS to do. But yes, the pond will be maintained at Ebenezer. And we will continue to do uh, uh, surveys, uh, fish surveys uh, annually and take, take good care of them. Uh, another statement that's here is more of a, a comment than anything else, but I think, Ross, you could definitely speak to it, is that in terms of um, the public understanding that the SPLOST is a sales tax, not a property tax, and that this is a renewal, not a new tax. And so um, the, the residents of Cobb County, are do they tend to be more inclined to vote um, in support of something that is a renewal and that it is being paid for by everyone um, that comes through the county? That's why we did, when we did the, the town halls we did, they were the SPLOS renewal town halls because mm -hmm. we wanted everybody to know that this is not a new tax, that this is just a continuation of what we've had uh, available to us in the county for, for many decades now. And it's done a lot of good in the county. And we wanted to point out the legacy that SPLOS has left behind and why it's important to keep that uh, uh, coming in. And I also mentioned that, you know, it, despite uh, having a SPLOS and it's a sales tax, we remain the lowest at 6% sales tax county tied for the lowest in the state. So um, there's a lot of benefits to it. Um, we, we've talked to the chairman's been on the record saying many, many times that if uh, SPLOS is not renewed and we have to fix these roads, you heard all of what Erica said about road resurfacing, 
um, that it would be hard, the, the, the future board of commissioners would be hard pressed not to uh, look at the raising the millage rate to get that done because that has to be done. So um, um, it, it's very important and, and that's all we can do is just keep pushing out the information that this is a sales tax. It doesn't come in your property tax bills. It's been uh, something that's been applied to your taxes for many decades now. And this would simply renew that for another six years starting in 2022. The challenge for us is, and, and I think we all experience this, so many new, there are so many new faces in Cobb County now who weren't here for the last PLOS vote uh, that we really need to reach out to and make sure that they know um, all the facts about it. Great. Wonderful. Well, our time is about up today. We've had a fantastic group of participants and lots of great questions. And thank you so much to our panel. You guys are um, wonderful and everything that you do on a daily basis to, to keep Cobb County moving forward is appreciated by everyone. Um, Ross, thank you for moderating and putting together the PowerPoint. I know that there um, is lots of information about the SPLOST on the Cobb County website, which was in the PowerPoint, and Lucy will also make it available um, to everyone in the chat. So thank you all uh, for your participation in our Town Center CI ID Lunch and Learn. We hope that you will look um, at the Alliance and the projects that are coming down the pipe and just consider membership. So have a great weekend. Stay safe. Um, wear that mask in public and wash your hands. So happy Friday. Thanks, everybody.